All right, I'll have a meeting with Director O'Bannon and all members. We'll continue to order at so 6 p.m. First order of business is to review the minutes from January 18th, 2024. Make a motion to minute to Thursday, January 18th, 2024. Second. I wasn't here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's no conversation. All in favor of approving minutes. Uh, financial statements and warrants. Uh, so 14 warrants totaling $154,114.56 were signed since the last meeting. I emailed you the expense reports. I'm happy to take questions. You should be aware of any major account overages or savings at this point and the budget really didn't change a whole lot if you look at the bottom line it was very minimal change from last month to this month so let me know if you have questions otherwise that's all i have for fi24 <laughs> yes. all uh, no, I'm okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next item on the agenda is a goal for the committee. Anyone has anything that we're to bring up? Moving on to principal's report. Sure. I just have a couple light and fun things to share. We celebrated the 100th day of school with lots of activities and um, creating manipulative towers. I sent you guys some pictures of that so you can kind of see what it looked like. Door decorating, we just announced winners this week and I don't even know how we're gonna outdo the, some of the doors that we had um, this week. I sent you a couple of pictures so you could see like the lining is amazing. We had windmills, like working windmills up. There was a, a town of Deerfield, a Lorax, the Smith superheroes. <laughs> just a shout out to anybody sitting in the back over here. Um, so that was a fun event at the school, to brought the whole school together. And then on a different note, we had some school-wide data meetings, but I'll let you read about that. Next up, we have public comment. This is a well-attended meeting. All right. Any public comments? comments? All right. <laughs> Nope, just waving oh, the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Is it Congress? Unfinished business. Uh, first thing I'm off to is vote for new policy. I'm not going to read them all now. They're on the agenda. I'll read them in a moment. Um, we reviewed them last time. Is there any comments or concerns? Just read them. Does anybody know the. Um, I guess it's file HB. What the major change was on that one? It was, it was about negotiating legal status. It looks like a whole paragraph was taken out and then just one sentence left in. And no way to weave from it. But okay. it anything major on that? We didn't talk about it last time. Okay. Yeah, but I know it's on it. It's the legal language that's recommended. So they, they recommend removing all that and just yeah. replacing it with a simpler language. Fine. So that's um, okay. Okay. So I have a couple of things. Um, so the first thing is if there's no further questions, I think we could vote on them all as a whole. So I would be looking for a motion to remove policies CL, FBB, GA, GCCD. GDQD, GCQE, GDQC, H, JBA, JHBBA, JHC, and JKA. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Okay. And the next batch was, I believe, all policies that were changed or new, mm -hmm. as discussed mm -hmm. last time. So we'll vote to update policies E, E, A, B, C. B E A G B B I G C A G C K G B B H B J F J F B B J F B B one. So move. Second. All in favor to update the policies? Hello. 
right. It's like a high chart exam. <laughs> 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 so well. <laughs> share your screen. I did give you paper copies if anyone wants. So this is slightly different. Is it not share? I can't share. An error. Right here. Why is it up there twice? Okay, I don't know what's going on. But, all right. Um, so I did give you paper copies. I'm going to move pretty quickly because there's not a whole lot of change since the last meeting. I will point out the minor changes because the budget is slightly higher than we talked about last time. Um, but we are in good shape overall. Uh, we're going to jump right into looking at what level services is. You can see on here the wage increases, the non-wage increases, and then the adjustment for um, ESSER. Those funds um, I put back into the budget at the starting point. Uh, in case we don't have them in the new year. So there was an adjustment there for the ESSER grant. Uh, this is slightly higher because I added in a few thousand dollars for an adjustment for the transportation line because our contract is out for bid. We are expecting that to be up. Um, I felt like it wasn't quite high enough when I went back and double checked all the numbers after the last meeting. So we're up, that was 1.83 and now level services is presented at 1.95. Uh, next is uh, new requests and initiatives. So this uh, is related to field trips, uh, equity and access to provide um, adequate funding to support our families who need uh, aid to send their students on trips um, and also to provide proper busing. Deerfield has students with the most needs for specialized transportation out of all of the elementary schools. So we need to make sure that we have proper transportation for kids who are in wheelchairs, for example, mm -hmm. so that they can attend trips. So that is a lar the largest chunk of this increase. I want to say that that is at least 10000 if not 12000 um, for that portion. And transportation costs are just through the roof <laughs> across the state. So um, made an adjustment there. Curriculum consumables is for items related to our new curriculum and then other supplies and materials primarily related to increased costs and inflation. Minor increase here at 24000 We also talked last meeting about programmatic modifications and the addition of the DEN program. I just gave you a little blurb here from some of the information that Tina had shared last month in regards to this program. So just a reminder, we are looking to um, add a classroom that is specific for the early childhood age, so pre-K to grade 2. Um, and it's based right now on existing need within the school. There may be opportunity for expansion in the future, which would bring in revenue for the district. Um, but at this point, if I'm remembering right, we have between four and six students yes. that may be eligible to, to enter this program. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you want to talk any more about that just for the public as a reminder, or if you want to take one. Thank you, to Harry. Uh, if you'd like to do a brief update. Um, so the program would be to support students that may need a little bit more um, um, specialized instruction or socialization or a home base and um, to keep them kind of within our community because they have um, some of these students have multiple needs and it just provides them a little bit extra time um, and uh, support before going into a general education classroom. And kind of the home base, and we have a Good we have space because we've been consolidating classes, right? So you have a room available. Right, we have a room right down in the pre K K wing, okay. so it would be um, down with the rest of the grade level, and the room is all set up with restrooms, right. and um, it's a it's an ideal space for them. Right. So with a successful program, there's also potential savings for the district because any of these students with high needs could end up in an out-of-district placement. Right. And if we can meet their needs internally, it's most beneficial for them to stay at their home school. school. Next year, maybe. If it's success, you could maybe have revenue from... If we had placement. space for it and yeah. if and once the program's on the ground and right. successful. All right. 
Um, so we talked about costs of this and uh, explained that we would be looking to reallocate funds, but there would be a minor increase to the general fund budget. Last we had talked, uh, it was about $7,300 that I said we were going to need to fund this. When I went back into the budget and put in actual IA lines of where I thought people would be on column and um, step, felt like we needed to be a little bit more generous than what the wage base would be, especially we're talking about a specialized program. Right. So that's why you're seeing a little bit more of an increase over, over last month when we met. Um, but it's minimal funds to talk about adding a right. program that would have a significant positive impact, not only on students, but on families in our district. Um, we feel administratively it's a really smart decision given the changes that we're looking to put into place based on enrollment. So we, we would be reallocating existing funds within the budget to cover the cost outside of the $11,000. It seems like a minimal investment for saving money long term if you can it takes, you know, yeah. get this early intervention before they get into general the higher grades is to save money in the long run for sure. And survive I just wanna I brought this up last time. I think sometimes we focus so much on like a small serving a small segment of our sort of student population without acknowledging the value for all students to be with kids with different abilities in different parts of their day and the value that that provides to every single student in the building and for kids to be in their home school right it really is a no-brainer and, and money wise too obviously yeah, for sure. but even if it costs more money i would say that it's also a no and it benefits all students later on too if they can function better at you know they get the early intervention right. it's not disruption <laughs> early, later on yeah makes sense okay so I wanted to give you the enrollment projections. This would be with the new classroom, just so you could see how it would pan out. So that second grade class would get consolidated down to two sections from three, and then we would add the DEN program in there. Um, if we weren't adding this program, we would probably be talking about a budget cut because we are overstaffed based on our enrollment size. So. Yeah. It's nice to take advantage of that in a in a year where last year we made some really hard decisions and it is it set us up to be fiscally responsible to make some of these changes. So and this the only one left with a three. So mm -hmm. next year we six will have three. Mm -hmm. Wow. Right. Oh, that's gone. Yeah, the current fourth grade class that'll be fifth oh, grade. This is next year. year. This is next Sorry. year. Yes. Yep. Nope, that's okay. okay. Yep. I just want to make that clear. Um, all right, so yeah. where we're at with all of those changes and what we are recommended um, recommending administratively presents a 2.5% budget increase, which is slightly up from 2.43% where we were in January. Mm -hmm. uh, level services, new requests, the programmatic changes, and then the total is there for you. Okay. Uh, quickly going to just say a couple things about these slides. So we talked really generally about budget composition last time we met because we didn't have an exact number nailed down, but now that we are presenting 2.5, you can see here that uh, majority of our expenses are related to instruction, operations and maintenance are next, and then down the line from that. 84% of the budget makes up salaries and wages. Uh, that's about four and a half million dollars with the majority of those funds going directly to teachers, um, IAs, uh, principal staff, anyone who is school-based in this building and working directly with students. And then our other expenses start to even out a little bit more. Uh, you can see here that the pie is parts are much more level between uh, pupil services, which is uh, transportation costs. That's the primary driver in there for special ed and regular ed transportation, mm -hmm. um, instructional supplies and materials, and then operations and maintenance. Just some historical info, so you can see where we've been the last few years. And then uh, revolving funds and grants. So we do use other funding sources. Uh, the list is in this chart here on page 12. It's just over 700,000 that we use to help supplement the budget. The line item in here for ESSER, while I talked about adding that back in at the beginning, 
Deerfield has about $100,000 in separation costs for sick buyback retirements on the teacher contract next mm -hmm. year. We budget 30,000 annually right. because this school typically has at least one retirement a year. We're going to use the available estimate money to fund the difference so that that doesn't have to go on budget and we don't have to seek another funding source from the town. Those yep. funds will go away come September. Yep. And then the other um, items in there, the revolving funds and the grant, uh, those are pretty typical. There's inflation for uh, salaries and wages based on um, COLA and step changes. And then, school oh, lunch, is that revenue from the state? Yes. Right, they're yeah. the school lunch so we are st we're federally funded and state funded. Oh, okay. um, so everyone who qualifies for free and reduced lunch still, because we ask families to still complete yeah. applications, that funding comes from uh, the federal budget, and then the state makes up the difference. And so we don't charge at all. So because we did have, I mean, I remember last time we were here, we. We were way in the hole and then we did really good. We bought a, a director in and like all the schools really did good with their lunch program, but that yeah. all gone away now. Yeah, um, I think we're gonna start to see things get more tightened up. The state, the state is using funding from the millionaires tax to fund universal meals. They're also pushing uh, federally for there to be changes in the um, calculation of who qualifies for free and reduced, which could be a positive thing, but ultimately they're trying to get it more funded federally so that right. they can save money from the state budget. But they would have to change legislation right. in order to reverse this, which I personally think is going to be really difficult yeah, for them to do. Sure. Right. And also the, they were also talking about there may not be enough money coming from the millionaires fund to fund this this year. So there might be a revenue shortage and they don't know how they're going to address that yet. There's a lot of stuff. The state's kind of taking a turn financially. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And also all the money that was coming to the millionaires tax to offset schools and help support schools has gone to the lunch program. So it's kind of a, you know, where there was a lot of uh, pushing from educators and whatnot to, for the millionaires tax to help public education while it's important that students get fed, that money's now being dried up going that direction. So oh, well, that wasn't what people, Exactly. People who were, were really proactive to make that thing happen weren't thinking that was that was what's going to happen. Some may be happy, but I'm just kind of saying because sure. we, we went to a taxpayers uh, meeting where they uh, they kind of just kind of laid out a nonpartisan view, but sure. where things are at. So. Okay. All right. So the yeah. next page here t shows you what our total budget is, including those supplemental funds, and that's with a 2.5 percent general fund increase. So you can see the total operations of the school uh, cost us just over $6 million. There's a lot of info that I didn't go over that we went into great detail about last time. Like I didn't talk about the COLA percentage or the average step increase or those yeah. things. So if you have questions, let me know. We can go back and go over things. We just went so in depth last month that I wanted to give you a bit of an overview here, but I'm certainly mm -hmm. not trying to cut the conversation short. And if you have questions, I'm happy to go over it. Um, so next steps in, in our process is to decide if we want to move forward with the 2.5% at to public hearing. Mm -hmm. um, we would need a vote on that to move that ahead. The public hearing is scheduled for March 6th, and then the vote to adopt the budget would be on March 26th, and April 29th is the annual town meeting. I feel like we're in a really positive spot. You know, we made yeah. really difficult financial decisions last year that impacted our community would impact what the school looks like long term we had really thoughtful conversations that allowed us to be in a really positive position this year particularly considering we're talking about adding program that's going to be of such significant mm -hmm. benefit to our community and then there's we still have a couple of capital things uh, floors hvac or you know ac and mm -hmm. that kind of thing yeah, there's a couple of other things too, surveillance system and phone replacement that we're looking at funding internally Okay. Um, with savings from other um, expense lines and or school choice. Uh, can we look at voice over IP at all for the phones? I, believe it's, I don't know what the new system is. It's, I don't know either actually. Because there's um, something totally where we different. lease this stuff and we don't have to buy it all. Uh, I think our, my day job is looking at new, new phones, I think somewhere. And I forget where it was. Somebody was talking about it. And they're like, oh, no, we're going to do Oh, Town Hall, I think. Oh, okay. We need a new 
phone system as well. Instead of buying it, we we're going to leak it through a voice over IP thing. But I don't know. So the people. systems that the elementary schools have been upgrading to is the same that Frontier okay. went on so to a couple years. Yeah, we right. have. Yep. We started with central office, right? And now the main office is on the same system at Frontier. Yep. And Sunderland got a new phone system mm -hmm. last year. Okay. We're trying to do Deerfield and Conway this year okay. as well. Yeah, yeah, they go, they go the same pretty quick. And yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any questions do we have for me? Any comments? Do we have any questions? You know, students were significantly is that if they didn't have this like a support crew and uh, not being able to be serviced here, that answers your question. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> the other question is probably too broad for this group, but is there any discussion of region? Yes. Let's let the whole committee meet it. There's no discussion right now. Um, I'd love it. I'd love it because I do this. I do this five times a month. Um, but. Yeah. Right, yeah. The issue, um, so there's a couple of major issues that one of the biggest ones is healthcare. The towns pay a different amount of healthcare in each of their towns, and it's significant, it costs hundreds of thousands of dollars if we were all come together. So that initial cost burden has been kind of a showstopper from the beginning. Um, the second one is then lo loss of local control. Perceived local control is how I would say it, but um, yeah. we regionalize a lot so far. Oh, right, here, we so are, and we're used to it. Yeah, right. So, but that those are the. Those are but we've had we did a uh, what was it? I was a principal when we did it. The, we did a regionalization committee where we did a study of that, and the the big block was healthcare. Well, By looking at Mary, because you were on that committee. Did, um, did we have to? Care teacher pay at Frontier and here if we were regional. It, well, it so there's two different. Separate. So you can look at different ways. So you want to do K to twelve regional. Gotcha. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or which which would mean you'd have to bring thirty eight contracts to the Frontier contract right. and healthcare alone on that. Yeah. Would would now would take an influx of outside money to make it happen. Yeah. So if the state would would somehow not just do a one time payment, would do a longer term payment for towns to help towns yeah. out. Um, but then we started talking about whether or not just do the four towns, do a you know right. pre-K to six and then seven to twelve. Um, I think that's something that could be probably brought back to the table. Yeah. Um, but again, when the again is getting um, health care okay. is the big. But I think it's worth. There's some state funding. They give you money to um, investigate and then pay for the legal and pay for the, you know, that kind of stuff. And we got a grant for like twenty five thousand. A few years back um to do the study and that kind of thing mm -hmm. um, but there has to be the question is what motivates the towns to do it you know what i mean what motivates and many times you'll see towns that will do it it has to do with new building you know what i mean like so yeah. you know you, you lost a building or that kind of stuff or enrollment is so low that the town's going bankrupt on the school right now we don't have that kind of problem we foresee it down the road, but mm -hmm. um, you know, I think if and then the, what you brought up is the concern of consolidation. You know, nobody wants to lose their, their. If you look at this, the ones that you know you look at as we Waitley or Conway, you know, those towns are they're not going to let go of their elementary schools. It's their it's their meeting house. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I was on the regionalization committee in, when I was living in Pelham for Pelham and Amherst, and they were talking about you know Pelham's only. A, a mile or two away from the, an Amherst Elementary School, but that town was not going to give up the elementary school. You know what I mean? So it's also looking at that. It's, there has to be something that motivates the average person to say, "Yeah, I'm, I'd give up my local school to be a, yeah. become something else." And so, yeah, okay. anyway, there's a, the nutshell of the. No, good, good conversation. Yeah. Yep. Good. 
something before we take a vote. Does anyone have any thoughts, feelings? Are we voting? No. We're voting to propose. To have You're voting program. to move a, this number to public hearing. Okay. The, the thing about public hearing is you can't raise the budget number after public hearing without having another public hearing. Okay. And you have to have two weeks in order to have a public hearing posted. So just, just kind of telling you kind of the rules on that. So sometimes people will put a higher number at public hearing and then lower it afterwards. This budget is very calm mm -hmm. as it, it feels like we're moving smoothly through because you have a very smooth budget here. There's not a whole lot of right. ripples in it. We have other budgets where we're coming in at a higher number and we have to have conversations with the finance and select board committees about how we're going to move stuff around in some of the other four towns in their elementary schools. So when I say we just know what the difference it looks like in the sense of that. So um, so you're just voting to move this, this budget forward after you hear a discussion from the public hearing, um, which again, because it's such a calm budget, you may not even hear anything. This could be sailing all the way through. Um, and then we do an official vote at that next meeting. And all those dates you can change. Let's say you get to another meeting and there's fireworks and that kind of stuff and you wanna have more meetings to plan that stuff, but we just kind of spell it all out. The only thing the public hearing has to be the, that date and that time because we just put it in the paper. Yeah. So make a motion to board with a public hearing for the 2025 budget. At 2.5%. At 2.5%, yes. And the date is um, March 6th. I'll second. Okay. So the front entry project is um, all the paperwork's in order. I mean, it's in Fercog's hand. It will be out. It's it will be um, what do we call it advertised next week. Um, and we have a pre-bid meeting on the 27th. Thank you. Um, and so it's going to be moving right along. Bids will be due March uh, 22nd. So March 22nd, we'll have an idea of if we're in budget, you know, it's a closed budget. The bid process that we open up the bids and, you know, we look at the low bid. We have like uh, big alternates and stuff we could kind of do asphalt or concrete or anything like that or is it just no it's lump it is lump on this particular oh. one yeah um did we tell you all that no we didn't no, we didn't. Huh? yep yeah that's good because this is the uh, first three of um a lot of <laughs> All right, so this is where I give you guys the background of all these so that you have an idea of what you're looking at. Um, so again, this came from your policy subcommittee. We're almost done with the book and um, there's a whole slew of new ones that came out in December. So that's the technology ones. But um, under the, in the K section, we have KCD. Um, this is an updated, it's public gifts to school. There's updated language around fiscal review by school committee. Under KHA is public solicitation in schools. There's cleaner language. And this our policy was not updated the last time they did an update. So there's a, there, there was large changes um, in the cleaner language. LBC is relation with non-public schools. There's new language around that. Um, and that is important for Deerfield because we do have many private schools in town in which the public school has responsibilities to. Or sometimes people don't realize that, that we give services to um, provide services, usually around special education um, and services related there too, to the, the private schools. Um, free, because they're members of the town. EH, um, EHAA um, is, a, is a new policy, district security related to technology. Um, this is a foundation for administrative procedures and practices to ensure information is stored and accessed um, appropriately and is appropriately protected. Um, these, all these things we are doing, but you need to have a policy to be telling us, us being the administration and you know, the IT department to be doing it. So that's kind of, so it's not like right now we do have processes and we are protecting our information and that kind of stuff, but the policy basically 
protects the district legally that you have a policy telling us to do that. So I feel like I hope we're doing this and like we are. Um, GBEE -E is personal use of technology. This outlines responsibility of district personnel in their use of technology. Um, JICJ is student use of technology. Policy outlines the vision's responsibility of student use of technology. And of course, we already have that in our handbooks and acceptable use policies and that kind of thing. KCD is community use of digital resources. Um, this policy recognizes that digital resources, most notably public Wi-Fi, are now a common public resource of schools and outlines the appropriate considerations you should have in, a policy, in your um, procedures. KDCB is the district website and social media, which we obviously know we have. Um, this policy recognizes that districts and school community have both websites and social media pages and outlines best practices. Um, and then in the E section, EFC is universal free school meals, um, and EFD is school nutrition program charge policy. Um, those are both been updated since they changed the law um, and provided free lunches to all. So it, um, I think you can remember about eight months ago, I said we didn't touch that one because I go, they're going to change it. And they, and they did. Because like, um, there's a new law. And then we're removing KCD. Oh, and then you're removing um, K. I've done this at every KCD. meeting. Uh, I tell you, I've done it at every meeting and I haven't <laughs> learned my lesson. Um, and then we're moving, we're moving KCB, um, which is uh, community involvement in decision making. It, it was recommended by MASC to remove it as it this the ability for the community to give input is elsewhere in many other policies. And so it's the first read. So if you have questions and stuff, you can shoot me emails or bring it to the next meeting. Let me know what you think. Chairman report, collaborative report. I emailed out last week. Yep. Nice, shorter executive summary. Yep. Easy to read. Yep. Superintendent's report. Oh, budget, budget, budget. Budget and bids. Okay. All righty. Wow. That's a pretty reading. All right. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Thank you. All right. All Thank in favor? Thank you very much. Sweet.